you know, a lot of a lot of boys and men in particular, we don't learn that it's okay to express sadness. We learn that it's it's not okay to express sadness or anxiety or fear, right? We learn that that's not manly, right? So what we do sometimes is we we suppress those feelings of discomfort, and those feelings can turn into anger or rage, right? And and oftentimes anger is what's called a second secondary emotion, right? It's like the manifestation of an internal hurt, right? And it's like I want this person to feel the same hurt that I'm feeling, right? We like to say, "Ah, oh, so and so disrespected me." Right, but if we're honest, what we're really saying is, so and so hurt my feelings. That was Jason Vitello, and this is the Voice of Mombello podcast. Welcome back from the intermission. We're here with John. Uh, what's your name, Jason? Jason Vitello. Jason Vitello, and we're just here talking about what what like yeah, that was a gorgeous speech you did over there at the top in the. It was just amazing. Like, I don't know. I probably personally would never do that type of speech because I'm not that talented at doing speech. But we're talking about what kind of inspired you to do that type of speech, honestly. First of all, can you tell me a little bit more about uh, what I said in the speech that uh, that you enjoyed and I, what you I, found to be powerful? And I can speak to that. I enjoyed like when you're talking about the trauma. You're talking about like the trauma type of people having the trauma that they don't overcome it and stuff. And that, that really inspired me because. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think trauma is, is really, really important. I don't think we as individuals and uh, as a society, I don't think we do a really, really good job addressing it or even acknowledging it. Uh, and trauma, you know, is, is the result of really just bad experiences that happen to us throughout our lives and it can cause us to feel anxious it can cause us to feel sad or angry and i think far too often in our society especially boys and men right sometimes we get told hey stop crying before i give you something to cry about right or or man up or toughen up or don't be a sissy or don't be a girl or don't be this or that so as a as a result from a very early age, little boys learn that certain feelings are not okay to express. And a lot of times those feelings, uh, like fear or anxiety uh, or sadness, come from trauma, right? Bad experiences that happen in our lives that that we don't deserve, that uh, we have no control over. And instead of learning how to experience these uncomfortable feelings in a healthy way, we learn how to, to push them down right, to suppress them until until they can come up in explosive ways that are harmful to ourselves or those around us. Or we learn how to distract from them, right, through, through activities, through uh, sometimes substances, hopefully not anything you're dealing with, but, you know, sometimes adults, like, we'll, we'll drink too much or we'll get into other stuff uh, that'll, right, it's, it's, it's our attempt to kind of numb what we're feeling. It's because we don't want to deal with our feelings and we don't want to deal with the feelings that come as a result of trauma. And I got another question for you. And what, what, like, what made you come to this event? Like, you need, well, yeah, what, what, like, made you come to this event and talk about your, your life and speech and stuff? Thank you. Uh, what made me come to the event was uh, I was lucky enough to plan this event with a lot of the other people amazing people that, that you've seen here today, a lot of the amazing folks that you've been talking to. Uh, and we all had the same idea, right? We, when we think about trauma, sometimes we, we think about individuals having individual experiences that are disconnected. Uh, but, but really, entire communities can experience higher rates of trauma than they're supposed to, right? A lot of, first of all, trauma is a part of life. Pain and suffering and uncomfortable feelings uh, it just happened. It's part of the human experience. But but some communities, because of poverty, right, because they don't have resources, because they don't have healthy places or safe spaces to, to play and to pray and to go to school, they have uh, a, a very, very, very high amount of trauma that they have to deal with 
from the time they're, they're children, right? Um, other communities, they have uh, access to healthcare, they have access to quality education, uh, really nice playgrounds where, where the kids are safe, right? And they don't grow up uh, experiencing the same level of trauma. And uh, we believe that no one should grow up with that kind of trauma and all people should, should grow up feeling healthy and safe and, uh, and not just survive, but thrive, right? So that's why I came here today to talk not about just the, the individual experiences of trauma or helping people deal with the symptoms of trauma in their own lives, but how do we really look at society and these different neighborhoods and these communities to make sure uh, that, that trauma is not happening to begin with, right? So really it's about helping people heal from their trauma and helping people basically help, help prevent trauma from happening at all, right? So people like you and your partner here can grow up uh, having fun, right? Of course, you're gonna, you know, there's gonna be sadness. You're gonna, you're gonna have bad days, right? Uh, you know, you might get your heart broken, you might get a bad grade, right? All that stuff is, is normal, you know, the, the, the normal stuff that's part of growing up, but, you know, you shouldn't have to worry about your safety. You shouldn't have to worry about, um, it's kind of like, I like to use this analogy, right? Uh, if you're walking through a jungle and you come upon a tiger, right? What are you gonna do? I'm probably gonna run. <laughs> you're gonna run, right? You're gonna freak out. Your body's gonna react, right? It's your trauma response, fight or flight. That's totally normal, right? But what if, what if the tiger shows up every day on your, on your way to school, right? What if the tiger comes home every night, right? And now you're now you're you're experiencing that elevated trauma response on a regular basis. What do you think that does to your development over time? It really messes up your mind. Really messes you up, right? So what we're talking about is how individuals from certain communities, that's their experience. Walking home from school, there's the tiger, right? Uh, around every corner, right? And that's basically what we're trying to do. Get rid of these these tigers uh, from where they shouldn't be. You've clearly dealt with trauma. Tra Is it obvious? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> trauma. Um, how did it affect you? The trauma affected me the way it, it affects a lot of young men, right? Um, I was just saying to your your friend, you know, a lot of a lot of boys and men in particular, we don't learn that it's okay to express sadness. We learn that it's it's not okay to express sadness or anxiety or fear, right? We learn that that's not manly, right? So what we do sometimes is we we suppress those feelings of discomfort and those feelings can turn into anger or rage, right? And and oftentimes anger is what's called a second secondary emotion, right? It's like the manifestation of an internal hurt, right? And it's like, I want this person to feel the same hurt that I'm feeling, right? We like to say, oh, so-and-so disrespected me, right? But if we're honest, what we're really saying is, so-and-so hurt my feelings. It's the same thing, right? But we don't say hurt feelings because we're trying to be tough. Um, so yeah, I, I have a lot of trauma and I have a lot of hurt. I have a lot of sadness. I have a lot of like anxiety and fear about our future. And I got a lot of anger. Right. And what I'm trying to do is use those emotions to do something positive, right? To get up on a stage and talk to people and say things that I know are going to resonate, things that uh, I probably would have really liked to hear when I was your age, right? These are things that I've heard other people say. These are things that I've read that, you know, are in many ways like, like hearing the lyrics to music that's already playing in your head. You know what I mean? Uh, and I try to do that for others. Sometimes people don't like what I have to say. Uh, that's okay, because chances are what I'm saying isn't for them. <laughs> uh, but but it sounds like it it made an impact for for you and your friends, and that means that means a lot to me, and I'm I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah, it was nice and very nice. Thank you. Thanks. Right on. What's your name? Angel. Angel. Joe. Joe. Right on. Great to meet you. Thank you for listening to the Voice of Mombella podcast from the Active Collective Trauma Community Summit. To support our work and hear more youth-led community-based content, subscribe to our podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts. Also, follow us on social media.
at Confluence Media Center. This has been a Confluence Media production.